Imagine a world where your doctor is not a human, but an algorithm, where surgeries are performed with pinpoint accuracy by machines, where diseases are detected before symptoms even appear. This isn't science fiction, it's happening, and it's reshaping healthcare as we know it. Welcome to the world of AI and healthcare. Is this the future we've been waiting for, or are we risking too much by trusting machines with our lives? Stay with us, what you'll learn today might just save your life. Chapter 1. The Dawn of AI in Medicine Let's rewind. The idea of using machines in medicine isn't new. But AI, true artificial intelligence, entered the scene in a major way only in the last two decades. It began with data. Electronic health records, EHRs, created massive digital footprints of patient histories. Wearables started tracking heart rates, sleep patterns, glucose levels, 24-7. And with cloud computing and machine learning, we now had a way to make sense of it all. Suddenly, machines could learn from millions of patient cases. They could find patterns human doctors might miss, and they didn't need rest, breaks, or sleep. AI had arrived, and it was ready to diagnose. Chapter 2. AI as the Diagnostic Superpower One of the earliest breakthroughs? Medical imaging. Take this. A human radiologist might review 100 scans a day. But Google's DeepMind built an AI that could analyze cancer scans with greater accuracy than human experts. We're talking about detecting cancer at early stages, before it spreads, before it's too late. In ophthalmology, AI models from companies like IDX can now detect diabetic retinopathy from just one retina image, without the need for a specialist. Then there's dermatology. Apps like SkinVision let you scan your mole with a smartphone camera and receive an AI-powered risk assessment. It's like having a dermatologist in your pocket. But here's the catch. Should we be trusting these machines with life-altering decisions? Hold that thought. We'll get to it. Chapter 3. AI in the Operating Room Now, let's step into the OR, the Operating Room. AI is revolutionizing surgery too. Robots like Da Vinci's surgical system are already assisting in over 1 million procedures each year. These robotic arms are guided by surgeons but enhanced by AI-powered precision, leading to fewer errors, less blood loss, and faster recoveries. But it goes further. AI-assisted planning tools can simulate surgeries in advance using 3D modeling. They identify risk factors, help map out the safest paths, and even predict outcomes. In trauma cases, AI helps prioritize emergency care, suggesting treatment protocols based on vital signs and injury severity. We're moving toward a world where the most dangerous part of surgery is not the surgeon, it's the software crash. Chapter 4. Personalized Medicine and Drug Discovery One size fits all medicine? That's the past. AI is driving a shift toward personalized medicine, where treatments are tailored to you based on your genetics, lifestyle, and history. Imagine a drug prescribed specifically for your DNA sequence. AI systems can analyze billions of genetic combinations to predict how patients will respond to certain medications. No more trial and error, just precision. Then comes drug discovery. Developing a new drug takes about 10 years and over $2.5 billion. Enter AI. Companies like Insilico Medicine and Benevolent AI are using deep learning to discover new drug candidates in months not years. During COVID-19, AI models helped screen thousands of molecules for potential antiviral activity in days. Faster, cheaper, more effective, but also more power in the hands of machines. Are we ready for this? Chapter 5. Chatbots, Virtual Nurses, and 24-7 Care. Now picture this. You wake up at 2 a.m. with chest pain. Instead of rushing to the ER, you open an app. An AI nurse listens to your symptoms. It checks your vitals via smartwatch. And within 60 seconds, it tells you whether you need help or just antacid. Virtual assistants like Babylon Health and Ada Health are doing just that. They're not just symptom checkers. They're AI-powered triage systems, available 24-7, fluent in multiple languages, and scalable to serve millions simultaneously. This is democratizing healthcare, making it accessible even in rural areas with no doctors. But here's the ethical dilemma. If AI misdiagnoses, who's to blame? Chapter 6. Ethical Risks and Human Fears So far, AI in healthcare sounds like a miracle. 
But let's talk about the other side, the fears, the flaws, the ethics. Bias. If AI is trained on biased data, it makes biased decisions. One infamous case showed an AI system recommending less care for black patients compared to white patients with similar symptoms because the system learned from racially skewed past data. Privacy. AI thrives on data, but your health data is among the most sensitive information you own. Who controls it? Big tech, governments, insurers, overdependence. What happens if we stop training human doctors because AI does it all? What if an AI system fails and there's no one left who remembers how to interpret a scan? Legal accountability. If an AI-assisted surgery fails, who is responsible? The surgeon, the hospital, the AI developer? The more power we give to machines, the more critical it becomes to draw ethical lines. We must build transparency, auditability, and human oversight into every system. Otherwise, the cost may be higher than any of us can afford. Chapter 7, AI and Mental Health. Now let's talk about the human mind. Mental health is a silent crisis. Shortages of therapists, stigma, long wait times have all created a treatment gap for millions. AI is stepping in. Chatbots like Wobot and Wysa offer cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, via chat, proven to reduce anxiety and depression symptoms. They're not a replacement for therapists, but they provide instant support anytime, anywhere. Then there's voice analysis. AI models are being trained to detect early signs of depression, anxiety, or even schizophrenia just by analyzing how you speak, tone, rhythm, pauses, word choice. AI can listen without judgment, without fatigue. But again, can it understand? Chapter 8, Global Access and Public Health. AI isn't just about tech for the rich. In countries with doctor shortages, AI may be the only solution. In India, AI tools are helping rural clinics diagnose TB. In Africa, drone-connected AI systems deliver medicine to remote villages. During disease outbreaks, AI tracks infection trends, predicts hotspots, and allocates resources faster than any human system. Public health at scale is becoming smarter. Imagine predicting the next pandemic, not after it begins, but before it breaks out. With the right data, AI could do just that but only if we ensure fair access, cross-border cooperation, and public trust. Chapter 9. The Future. Where are we headed? Let's fast forward. The year is 2035. You walk into a hospital, no paper forms, no lines, no wait. AI scans your face and instantly pulls your medical history. An AI system guides you through a diagnostic room where sensors detect abnormalities in your breath, voice, eyes, and posture. A custom treatment plan is generated in seconds, based on global clinical data and your DNA. Robotic arms prep your medication. A virtual health coach walks you through lifestyle changes. On your phone, in your language, 24-7, doctors still exist, but they focus on empathy, strategy, and oversight. They work with AI, not against it. This future isn't far off. Pieces of it are already here, but it's up to us to shape it wisely. Will AI make healthcare more human or will it strip it of the compassion we value most? The answer lies in how we build, govern, and use this technology. So, is AI the doctor of the future? Maybe, but it's not just about tech. It's about trust, safety, equity, ethics, humanity. And that conversation, it starts with you. If this video made you think, even for a moment, please hit the like button. If you're curious about the future of AI, healthcare, and technology, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. We've got a lot more coming. And remember, the future of medicine may be artificial, but the care we give to each other, that must always stay real.